Hey guys and welcome back to the channel and if you are a new viewer please keep in mind that these videos are focused around Warframe and weapon synergies with all that other endgame loot in between. With that being said today's video is going to be a little bit different as I'll be showing you 10 of my favourite utility based weapons. From stripping armour, proccing multiple status effects, crowd control or neutralising nullifiers. This video will be used for reference for other build synergies, let's have a look. So why utility over raw damage you might ask? As some of you may already know, armour and health can scale so high in endurance runs that the targets seem near impossible to take down, without the use of such weapons anyway. Understanding your Warframe's limitations, weaknesses and abilities may give you an insight on what utility weapons you may require. More on that in more detail, right after a word from this sponsor. So by now I'm sure many of you will have already heard of Raid Shadow Legends, but have you guys played it? It's a dark fantasy RPG reminiscent of that old school turn-based combat that I grew up on and loved as a kid. It's now available on PC with seamless account crossplay, so there's no reason to start over. Working my way through the campaign, it quickly taught me that AoE spellcasters were the way to go for me, as I like to clear those rooms rapid quick. Obviously you're going to need the heals and tanks for those later levels in the dungeons, and upgrading your correct heroes and finding the ones that suit you, like this demon class for me, is essential. And for the next 30 days, you can get yourself a head start with 100k free silver and a rare slasher champion here. The links are in the description down below guys, check it out, now back to the video. Alright, now where was I? Oh yeah, so first on the list we have the Pox. Well known for its armor stripping capability and AoE proximity, it was always going to make this list of course. Bearing in mind that all these builds that you're going to see are all utility setups, so they're not focused around getting any sort of damage, so you in the comment section already like ramping up, just pipe down, okay good sir? And like I said before, if you know your Warframe strengths and its weaknesses, and even the weapons that you're going to be doing damage with, you can really enhance the performance, maximize their potential with just learning how to use status correctly with some utility focused weapons. It's probably also worth mentioning that this is all from an endurance perspective and uh, by all means if you just want to run around like 10 minutes in a survival and stuff then most of this isn't going to be necessary and it's probably not going to help you a lot other than to maybe understand a little bit more on how certain status effects can really ramp up your performance overall. Alright so next we have the Zacti and god forbid if I didn't put this one on here Nightmare Frame would have my head. <laughs> Love you buddy. Well, it has a lot of status, it has an innate gas proc as well, it has AoE on the explosions, it's really decent and also those explosions will open enemies up for finishers and stealth multipliers for a very short period of time. It's quite a versatile weapon overall for utility, um, as you know you can put a lot of different effects on there to ramp up condition overload, but obviously there are some of the little synergies such as like the Sky Ajati here and it's passive to go invisible on finishers. How it kind of helps you if you're a non-invisibility frame and you need to get out in a pinch, I suppose. I tend to use the Zacti if I have means to be able to strip armor with a Warframe or with a primary weapon instead as, you know, to be honest with you, having a secondary that can strip armor tends to be more my preferred now that the Kuberbrak exists. Next on the list we have the Strun Wraith, which is capable of getting 100% status chance before multi-shot mods. Uh, which is really useful and kind of essential, should I say, with pellet based shotguns. It's certainly not the best shotgun in the game, but it's definitely up there. It's surprisingly one of the few weapons that I actually build for corrosive and blast. I enjoy how the knockdowns work with this weapon. Um, it seems accessible and it actually can trigger a slight AoE with a blast, which is nice. You'll see in this example coming up. So let's just jump in here and get some combo with the uh, Venka Prime, also, as well, which is. What I was getting at with this weapon, why I like it with Blast is you can really sort of exploit ground finishes with relative ease with this weapon, while also stripping armor at the same time, which is, I just, I don't know, it's something enjoyable about the playstyle. Um, you should definitely try it out. I think it's a lot of fun. Something I've mentioned in other videos about the lock and load mod that I've used in the Exler slot here. Now what this does is while your weapon's holstered, you reload a partial part of the magazine, and that counts for when you're using your melee weapon, so once you've pummeled them to the ground with a Strun Wraith and you go in for those ground finishes, it's actually reloading the magazine while you're pummeling them with the Venkas. It's uh, really nice and it really gives a good flow to the battle. 
Next on the list we have the Maradetron. I absolutely love this weapon, despite its design kind of looking a little bit like a VHS tape to me with a handle strap to it. <laughs> Certainly unique though, right? So there is some downsides to this weapon in my opinion, and that is mainly because to get the most out of it you need 100% status chance before multi-shot mods, and I kind of need a ribbon to get that, but uh, unfortunately I had cold on this one, which sort of nullified any idea of just using corrosive and heat on this weapon, because obviously you get blast, which is just kind of annoying. Worth noting as well that the Seeker mod is a preference um, tailored towards Mag, as the punch through really helps with her magnetizable synergy with the Myrodetron. Once you get the 100% status before multi shot mods, this weapon is a bit of a beast to strip armor. There are some that outclass it now, but um, that additional radiation if you're not running a stealth frame that's squishy to get caught in crossfire, it's certainly a very solid choice to use. I guess another downside to this weapon is also that, well, it's a Barrow Katir weapon, so unless you've got a friend who has a spare, or uh, you've got some plat for trade, or whatever, then you might have trouble acquiring this weapon, until it comes back around, that is. Here's a quick example of the Maradetron synergy with the magnetized bubbles with punch through. You can see the bullets just keep going round and round, they build up inside, as uh, till it's just like a big swirling pool of death. Uh, it's kind of cool to see visually and, well, th the numbers are kind of nice as well. Now, not that this list has a ranking system at all, but if I had to pick a number one secondary in the game right now, it would be the Kuva Brack. It's got incredible armor stripping capability and it dishes ridiculous damage even when you build it for utility more than anything else. Obviously, you can switch out Suppress and Reflex Draw, if you're going to be using a stealth frame, or if you're not going to be using one, then suppress might not be for you. You might want that holster speed instead. Currently, I have a 58% bonus on electricity on my Cooper Brack, but toxin or heat is a good way to go as well. As long as you can get corrosive and heat on this bad boy, it's going to shred armor. I have a ribbon with an additional multi shot and punch through that I use personally, and I honestly absolutely love the thing. You're definitely missing out if you don't have this weapon, so go out there and go kick that lich's ass. Next on the list we have something that's pretty goddamn new, and I have to say I'm really impressed with the Kuva Nucor. Um, it's got really good AoE potential, and surprisingly not bad armor stripping, or damage for that matter. So this is kind of actually a hybrid setup, it's not full utility, but um, honestly, yeah, there's so many ways you could build this weapon, but just check out the armor strip AoE, and um, yeah, the damage just ramps up after a while. It's it's crazy, like really, really good. Oh, by the way, I'm fully aware that you're not gonna need to strip armor with the new core when you have a Saren. So before you get triggered and start typing a comment again, chill out, it was just for aesthetic purposes. However, I was trying out a gas Saren uh, new core build that was pretty tasty with Toxic Lash, I'm not gonna lie. You could even mass proc viral if you really wanted to because of its AOE. Um, which obviously is going to half enemy health bars on the viral proc, which could be really handy, I suppose. Definitely a surprising weapon. And now it is open season for nullifiables everywhere, as we're waging war against them with the mitre and the neutralizing justice augment. If you know you're going to be facing nullifiables, it can be a top pick for warframes like Gara, where you want to preserve your splinter storm and not lose all that damage you've racked up there. There's not much to the mitre other than using the neutralizing justice augment and then I just slapped a bit of punch through and a lot of fire rate on here so I can spam as much as possible if there's multiple nullies because just firing one isn't going to take out a group and sometimes nullies can stack up. Um, this is a bit more of an extreme case here in this example but just look if you can spam these blades you're going to take out the stacked nullies pretty easily. It's worth noting as well, the nully bubbles don't come back. Once they're neutralized, that's it. You can chill. Oh, and if you do want the parts for the mitre, you can farm them from Ceres, the dual boss with Lieutenant Lich Krill and Captain Vor. Coming up next, we have the Ferox, which I've covered before with my Avara video. There's some slight changes to the mods, however, as multi-shot does not affect the secondary fire. We have a lot of fire rate on here to help take the status procs, and Hush is just a preference for Ibarra really, just in case I accidentally clip the primary fire and I get pulled out of stealth because of it. I just found that useful. By all means, you could put something else in there if you like. 
The utility and usage of this weapon is mainly drawing enemies towards the staff itself, which is then going to tether to the enemies, proccing electricity, and more importantly, how we built it for viral. That viral proc, like I mentioned before, halves an enemy's health, which is incredibly useful for just something that you've just thrown out there, while you can then dish out other damage. What we're going to do here is pair it with the Kuba Brack like I did with the Vara. As you can see, all the enemies are just clumped up together. We're going to strip a bit of armor with the Kuba Brack and then just go in for the kill. It's really useful. Look at it. It's like some crazy corrupted orgy going on. Next we have the comb and the Kuva comb variant. I have a confession to make though, I don't actually have a Kuva comb yet. What am I playing at? It's like one of my favorite weapons, I should get one, right? So for the normal comb, I would recommend getting yourself a ribbon with a minimum of 120% status chance so that you can achieve 100% status on your comb without multi-shot mods. This is gonna allow you to be able to use corrosive and heat without adding that blast damage in there as well. I am told that the Kuva variant does have the ability to be able to get 100% status chance before multi-shot mods without the use of a ribbon, so by all means go out and grab yourself one, I'm certainly going to be getting one soon to give it a go. I mean I have covered this weapon a lot to be honest with you, and with good reason as well, it's just an absolute monster. You ramp up in a fire rate on this weapon and it's just absolutely crazy. Um, it's really good synergies with Warframes like uh, Equinox and a duality build or the clone from Wukong because it just gets to work at stripping armor from a distance and it has a bit of punch through as well which is really nice. I do keep getting asked if I'm going to revisit older builds that are now a bit outdated on my channel and the short answer is yes, I've just got to work through the other synergies that I've already got planned, so stay tuned. And lastly, we have the Sinex pistol, which I covered before again. It's just a really good weapon to stack a load of status effects on, and it has tracking bullets. So essentially, you don't even really need to aim with this weapon. It can even shoot around corners a lot of the time. Suppress is a preference if you're using an invisibility frame, of course. Swap this out for something else if you, uh, you know, you're not using an invisibility frame. The Sinex pistol encourages a sort of run and gun play style, and even though condition overload isn't as strong as it used to be, it's still pretty goddamn strong, especially when you're just procking viral gas and radiation on enemies um, from around corners with tracking rounds. I usually pair this weapon when I have a Warframe that can strip armor, or a primary weapon that can also strip armor, I suppose. It's useful in that regard to just proc a load of status effects, and it's definitely worth a consideration if you have the spare slot. Uh, that's about it for this video today. A big shout out to Ludens for helping me and providing some capture footage. I'll leave a link in the description for his channel also. Big shout out to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring the video. It's my first time doing a big sponsor. It's going to help me out a lot. Thank you for watching guys. And by all means, if I missed a utility weapon that you really love, um, let me know in the comment section down below. That's all for me now. Ciao for now.